Hi, um, we're going to be talking about hand tools today and um, what they're called and how they're used. One of the first tools we're going to talk about is the tri-square. Well, if you can see, but it has a, a thicker side which is called the uh, heel or the uh, base and then this part, the thinner part, is called the blade. Now, when we use it, we press the thicker part up against the edge of the wood and it can help us marking the wood at a 90 degree angle. So I can mark that and make sure my cuts are square and at a 90 degrees. So it's a neat little tool. Um, you'll need it when you, we can see the markings of the, the built-in ruler that it has. So that's our, um, our tri-square, okay? Another tool we can use is a rasp or a file. This tool is a, has a combination actually. The rougher side right here is called the rasp. The finer side over here is called a wood file. And I will show you how it's used. Let's move it over here to the vise. Let's say, for instance, we want to uh, round this edge. We can take the, the rasp. Now, you see what happened here? That we've got some chipping. That's because it's going the wrong direction. You don't want to go that way. So what I did is I've, I've rounded that edge out and now I can smooth it I can smooth it using the finer side of the file so we have a rasp and we have a file all right so that's that tool The next tool I'd like to demonstrate is the back saw. Back saw is easy to remember what it's called uh, because it has a backing of steel that's quite thick. So this is the back saw. Um, handy little tool. It's good for cross, it's best for cross cutting. Not so much for ripping because the teeth are very fine and because it won't be able to go in deeper than this part of, of ripping the wood with the grain because it'll hit the back. Speaking of grain, I want you to realize that grain, this is called the grain. When you're ripping wood, you're cutting with the grain. When you're cross cutting, you're going against the grain, against the lines. I'll demonstrate now how we can use the back saw to make a cross cut on one of these lines that I did earlier, all right? You want to secure the, the bench vise <clears throat> firmly, but not over tight, okay? When you start your cut, I like to use the knuckle of my fingers, pull back, And I don't know if you can see it, but I've started a little cut. There's a common mistake where students really try to push hard and they force the saw through the cut. Let the saw do the cutting. <clears throat> you don't want to be pushing it real extremely hard. 
let the sawed teeth do the cutting. Also, if you notice the board starts to vibrate a lot, <clears throat> move it in closer to the bench and you'll get less vibration. Try to keep the cut right down the line. As you come, come closer to the edge or the end, lighten up on your pressure because if you push real hard, it's going to crack the wood. We finished our cut right there. All right. The next two tools I'd like to show you about are called planes. The smaller one, this is called a block plane and it's primarily used to trim the grain, the end grain pieces of wood in this fashion. Now, I'll demonstrate in a minute how it works. But you want to be aware that if you push all the way across, it's going to split and tear the wood. Okay? This is called, the larger one is called the jack plane. And the jack plane is for going with the grain in this direction. So we have the jack plane and we have the block plane, which is useful for the end grain. All right, I'll be demonstrating that in a minute. That cut is the piece that goes from here. So uh, on your first day, you're going to want to take your ruler and at the top, you're going to want to mark it at seven. The bottom, you're going to want to mark it at six. You're going to want to connect those two lines so it looks like that. Oops. So you're going to want to take your block of wood and at the top you're going to mark it at six inches and at the bottom you're going to mark it at seven inches and then you'll have this practice diagonal cut. Let's practice our cut with the back saw. Starting the cut with the guide by my edge of my thumb. Made the cut. We can put the smaller piece in the wood recycling box. We don't need this piece right now. Then, using the block plane, make sure you can see what we're about to do. We can, remember the smaller one, is the block plane. We can make a cut. Wow, it's pretty deep. I'm going to adjust it so it's not quite 
such an aggressive cut. It should be a little better. So, you only want to cut to about midway on the block of wood and then I'm going to come in from the other direction and I'm going to cut like that to clean up that, clean up that edge. Now, if I were to go all the way across, I would have a lot of splitting on the ends. This end would be split, this end would be split. You don't want to go with a block plane all the way across because you will tear out that wood. Now, the jack plane. Let's say you've made a cut along here and you'd like to smooth out that edge. We can take the jack plane and clean it up. Now this jack plane has also got a bit of an aggressive... There we go. Now, we always want to take a jack plane or a block plane and lay them on the sides on the bench when we're not using them so the table isn't cut and the blades aren't dulled unnecessarily. And the jack plane, you want to have a good help, good grip on it Use your body weight and try to go nice and even all the way across. Now on day two, you're going to want to drill, practice drilling a hole. And what you're going to do is you're going to measure up two and a half inches, which is right there. You're going to measure out two and a half inches. And where these lines intersect is where you're going to drill your hole. We're going to be using a tool called the brace. This brace is a wonderful tool. Crank it like this and it operates the brace. You never want to drill your wood on the table. You could possibly go through and damage the tabletop. So we're going to place it in the vise. We're going to snug it down. We're center the tip of the brace. And we're going to turn the handle clockwise as you look down. Now what I'm doing, I'm feeling to see when the tip of the bit comes through. Now, the tip has just started to come through. At this point, I'm going to take the bit out from the wood. Now I have my wood here. I've got a partially done hole. I'm doing this because I don't want to blow out or strip or create a bunch of splinters. So I'll take my wood over, flip it over, secure it down. Put it back into that little hole and I'm coming in from the other direction. Now I've created a hole with a clean edge on both sides, relatively clean. Now the next step, at the bottom of the wood I'm going to show you using this just as an example. I'm going to measure three quarters of an inch here, three quarters of an inch over on this side. I'm going to connect those two points. And now I'm going to put it in the vise. And I'm going to use the handsaw. Handsaw, unlike the backsaw, doesn't have a stiffening edge here. 
just just a piece of spring steel kind of fun little tool Ease up as you finish the cut, and we have our piece of wood cut off. Okay, that just about covers all the tools on the uh, area that you're going to be using on tools and machines. But there's one tool that I, I need to show you that's very important. That tool is the dustpan and the brush. It's really important that when you're through working here, you put away all the tools, you put your, your piece of wood that you're working on in your backpack, and you clean up the floor and the workbench and you put all the tools away. All right, I hope you learned something and uh, I'm excited to see what you do with your project. All right, good luck and have fun.